Have you ever seen those pictures of bad resume examples online? If you haven't, I suggest you Google it. Some of them are hilarious. Hi everyone, I'm Eva from Resume Genius. Today, I'm here to help you avoid making those same resume mistakes and becoming internet famous for all the wrong reasons. Also, if you stick around until the end, I'll give you a checklist of ways you can quickly tell a good resume from a bad one. Let's dive into it. Using a lot of different font sizes makes your resume harder for hiring managers to read. First impressions are key, and you want your resume to look clean and professional. Use a larger font size for your name. Around 30 points is usually a good choice and stick to 10 to 12 points for the rest of your resume. If you want to make your resume section stand out more, make your font size 13 to 14 points. Anything bigger than that makes it seem like you don't have enough skills and experience to fill up a one-page resume and you're trying to be sneaky by hiding it. Everyone loves to hate on Comic Sans, but it's not the only font to avoid when writing your resume. I'll teach you a little trick to help you decide if you should use a specific font or not. Ask yourself, does this font make my resume look like a love letter written by a character in Shakespeare? If the answer is yes, pick something else. You don't want hiring managers to reject your application simply because they can't read it. Here are a few examples of good fonts to use. Arial, Times New Roman, Georgia, Calibri, Cambria. Personally, I'm a huge fan of neon colors. They're fun, vibrant, and impossible to miss. However, they don't belong on a resume. They certainly make it stand out, but not quite in the way you want. This doesn't mean, though, that you can't include a little bit of color on your resume. It just means that instead of going for hot pink, you should go for something more subtle and neutral. Darker colors like navy blue and maroon are always a safe bet. And depending on the industry, even pastel colors can be okay. And if you're applying for a role in a creative field like fashion design or social media marketing, you can be a little more bold with your color choices. You might be surprised to hear that including graphics on your resume can hurt your chances of being hired. Even if you're applying for a job as a photographer or a graphic designer, you should avoid graphics. First of all, graphics can be distracting. While you want your resume to be memorable, you want it to be because you're a great candidate, not because of your overwhelming resume design. Second, many companies use applicant tracking system software also known as ATS software, to scan applicants' resumes and automatically reject those that don't match the employer's requirements. Applicant tracking systems struggle to read resumes with graphics on them, and as a result, could reject your resume even if you were totally qualified for the job. Stick to using just text on your resume. You knew it was coming. Grammar and spelling errors. It's one of the most common resume mistakes, but it's also one of the easiest to avoid. So if you only listen to one thing I've said today, make it this. Proofread your resume. Even better, proofread it and then ask your parents, best friend, or even your teacher to have a look as well. After you put all of that time and effort into your resume, you don't want to lose out on the job just because of an unfortunate typo. And as promised, here's how to tell the difference between a good resume and a bad resume. If you're not sure how to get started, check out this video which explains how to download and use our free resume templates. See ya!